What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, djlittlerock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you could have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Let me entertain you. Speaking of entertainment, today on the program, I got Richie Mullins. Oh, wait, you've heard Richie Mullins? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's been some Richie Mullins in the, in the past, but this is the Richie Mullins of the now. He's an upcoming country artist from Na- in Nashville, in in Nashville, Tennessee, but he's from uh, Michigan, Plainwell, Michigan. So uh, maybe a a small town boy making good. Yeah, he's got a few songs out there on the interweb for you to enjoy and listen to, and he's got so much more that's coming out in the near future. So uh, you, I want to learn a little bit more about Richie Mullins, and let's uh, wait, uh, stick around. <laughs> that's going to happen in the next few minutes. Uh, this week's shows, Friday night, I will be at my usual Friday night hangout, the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, the video dance party, karaoke jam. Yes, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show at the karaoke jam at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, from 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. They got a full bar, the kitchen's open, pool tables, pool tournament on Friday night. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool, I encourage you to check out the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. And check out the food. Oh my goodness, they got some good food. The uh, the new owners, and I say new owners, they've had it for about uh, six months or so. They've been reworking the kitchen. Uh, they're the uh, the guys. They're the people that own the um, the Italian restaurant in Conway, uh, uh, across from the movie theater up on the uh, up on the hill between the uh, you know right next to the McDonald's and the gas station and the and the, and the hotel. Uh, but uh, yeah. They own that Italian restaurant, and they've been turning the food in the uh, in the rab into some good, good, good food. Mm, mm, delicious. So you can have some good food, have some good drinks, play some pool, possibly play in the pool tournament while you're hanging out there. Or And you can come sing on stage, a little karaoke jam. You're the stars of the show. That's the rab on Friday night, Conway, Arkansas. From 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the a.m. And then on Saturday, Saturday, I got a wedding in Greenbrier, Arkansas. Yeah, so excited. Man, we've been planning this thing for for a while now, and I'm kind of stoked that it's finally happening. Uh, You know, I'm so happy that I get to be part of weddings. I had a wedding last week down in uh, Sherwood at the, uh, the venue at Oakdale. Oh, my goodness, what a nice place. And I'm looking forward to the wedding this weekend in Greenbrier. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. Uh, you know, unless you're invited, you cannot come. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you exactly where it's at. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, the reason I mention it is because I'm so excited to be doing weddings. I get to be a part of the show, playing the music, making the announcements, getting the people up and dancing and having a good time, celebrating the nuptials, celebrating a wedding, celebrating a marriage. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, that's it for that's it for the intro. Let's get into it with Richie Mullins. I had I got him on Skype. So if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash keys dan. I guess now it's youtube.com at keys dan. Yeah, that makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> Skyping Richie Mullins now. How's that? Is that better? All right, that'll have to do. Excellent. Richie Mullins. I'm you're, sorry. Okay. Tell, all right. So tell tell the people who you are. Oh, you're good. Um, I'm, like I said, Richie Mullins. I'm a country boy. Some people say cowboy because I wear this all the time. <laughs> um, I, I grew up on between 40s and 90s country music. And that's where my sound originally comes from. I mix blues, jazz, and older rock into my sound. And um, I actually, with recording my music, I don't do digital. I do analog, big soundboard. It, it, it sounds more real, more amazing, especially when you get instruments in it. To, to me, dig, digital is just code. 
when you get into analog, it's just a chippy pierce now. So are you recording on a tape, reel to reel, uh, going way back? Um, no, I am actually not um, recording reel to reel. Um, it's a um, it's a big twenty four channel console, is what it is. Uh huh. <laughs> and um, it's a radar system. Well, also used. Man, I'm not sure what that is. And, and I, I see that you uh, you have a guest star on your video screen. You have a, a, a doggy, a puppy. Uh, you know, got to love those dogs. Got to love those puppies. Oh. Uh, it's it's okay if he wants to lick your face and, and uh, be a part oh, of the show. Oh, he's barking at the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing his job is what he's doing. That's what dogs do, bark at the neighbors. <laughs> and when people go, quiet, no, 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 he's doing his job. <laughs> you, you you, got the dog to protect the house, to protect the people. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's a, that's that's a definitely a good dog. What kind of dog is that? He's actually black lab mixed with dachshund. Wait, what? Oh, black lab, kind <laughs> he, of a bigger uh, dog, medium, looked, medium size dog. I looked dog. that up, and it's an uh, artificial insemination Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I, I wondered. I wondered how that how that uh, makes out in the wild there. Uh, you know, but yeah, uh, hey, I understand that things do happen, man. But uh, okay, that's nice. Sounds like you got a, a nice dog, an animal lover, and that's a, a good quality oh, yeah. for a, a Richie Mullins. So the people already know he's a pretty good dude. He likes animals, and animals like him. Uh, you know, some people, uh, you know, say uh, if if dogs don't like you, I don't like you. <laughs> yeah i i agree with that actually um animals are extremely good judge of character <laughs> i i get i get bit a lot by animals but then it's it's on it's on me because i i, I i'm uh you know I, I get to go from uh house to house and and uh visit with people quite some time and I, I deal with a lot of a lot of strange dogs in my day job that can do <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know hey uh, you know a lot of times they'll go oh don't worry he won't bite and he's just definitely nips me right in the leg or whatever oh well <laughs> what what are you gonna do it's in their nature right. they were wolves at one time for crying out loud but uh you know mm -hmm. you say cowboy I, I wonder what constitutes a cowboy can somebody from plains well michigan be a cowboy or do you have to be <laughs> south of the mason dixon line can you have cowboys anywhere i guess there's cowboys out in the in the west and in, in wisconsin in uh, michigan in, in the the territories that are wide open spaces you got to have cowboys out there tell me about uh young michi richie mullins in uh, Michigan, tell me about your young life. Well, me growing up, uh, going through hard life anyways, because I was poor, and I worked on farms a lot for free. Uh, um, and I, I bailed hay a lot. It was one of my, actually still my favorite thing to do, as long as my body can hold up throughout the day. <laughs> um, my hometown was nothing but fields, cornfields, hay fields, all that stuff. And uh, riding horses, I spent my childhood outside most of the time because 90s was just like the 80s and 70s with that. My grandparents raised me and they kicked me out of the house, told me not to be back until the streetlights came on. <laughs> Now that's legit, man. You can hardly get the kids to go out these days, man. I, they're you know you st they're stuck inside on on their screens. I mean, I don't care if they go to the park and go play on their screens. That's fine. Go take go take your iPhone or your iPad and go out to the at least go to the park, get some sunshine on your butt. Nope, nope. They're gonna oh, yeah. stay inside, sit on their chairs, uh, go to their rooms, you know, uh, and, and stay comfortable in the air conditioned air. No, no, no. I'm I'm a child of the '80s myself. I, you know, I, I, '70s and '80s. Where the way you figured out where your friends were was where all the bicycles were, or yep. you know, hey, we're all meeting at Mikey's. Oh, we're all meeting at Richie's today. He's got the uh, he, he's got the uh, the snacks. His mom's got snacks, and but uh, you know, sometimes moms don't have snacks. You know, I know I know my mom didn't yep. have snacks all the time. So uh, maybe you just drink from the hose. No big deal, okay? But uh, I, I have fond memories of that. I just made sure they get the little spurt out before you get the cold water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. If it, especially in the hot summer day, you got to make sure all the hot is out of that uh, out of that hose that that little fifty foot rubber hose, 
and then uh, you get that yep. nice lukewarm water. <laughs> it, it 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 ain't the best, but it's it, it quenches a thirst. But uh, you man, you're, you're legit, man. You rode horses and you bailed hay. I'll tell you, that's some good hard work. That'll make you strong. Uh, did, did was that the workout for you when you were growing up? Other than playing like the street basketball, street football, just stuff at the park like that. Yeah, that was practically a workout for me. I loved what I did. Um, horseback riding. I actually still have a horse up in Michigan right now. One of my best friends are boarding her. I was like, I don't have the land down here, not on the country, unfortunately, to have her here. No, that's very respectful of the animal. You got this big giant animal. You definitely got to give it a few acres. I mean, I, oh, how, how many <laughs> how many acres do you need to to store a horse? A horse, if you, it's best to have at least a barn for the one horse to or yeah to be in there. I would say you want at least a good four to five, just so it can roam around, graze be what it needs to do <laughs> I, I would love to have land that's like 10 to 15 so i can trail ride well that's a goal right now then uh, it looks like richie mullins is working his heart out you know getting that good music out there hoping that people will buy his wares maybe hire you out for a gig go play at a club and uh throw you some ducats so you can go buy that land and get that horse down from michigan or, I mean, do you want to end up in Michigan? You, you know, Nashville, uh, Tennessee might be the, the place you ought to be if you're doing country music. Uh, it is the music capital, a a music capital of the world. Not Maybe not the, but certainly a place to be. Lots mm -hmm. of places to record, lots of places to play. But uh, do you want to end up back in Michigan? Um, I currently actually don't want, like, I don't mind visiting, but I, I won't live there again because I don't like the cold and Michigan is like nine months out of the year cold. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, I agree. I'm from Miami, Florida, and here I am in Conway, Arkansas, just north of Little Rock. I think we had two or three snow days last year and that's two or three too many no, please, no. I've been out to Graceland in the winter time when it's uh, uh when it's snowing and it's beautiful. Uh, you know, no doubt. Uh, you know, I, I love uh, what well, Memphis is probably the closest that I've actually spent any particular amount of time in Tennessee. I've been through on I forty through Nashville. You know, but I've never spent any real time there. Tell me about well, uh, before we figure out why you went to, to Nashville, Tennessee. Let's figure out, you say you were doing basketball. How were you as a student in school? What did you study? Um, a student in school, I wasn't the greatest because um, I have ADHD, so it was a lear it's a learning disability for me. Um, I was always a C and D student. I never was a straight A. It, I, the only time I got an A was like gym or automotive. <laughs> Well, I, I was or in music I, class too. Yeah, I think about uh, Rodney Dangerfield in a movie called Back to School, and uh, his kid was getting C's, all C's, and he goes A, B, C. You're in the top three, no big deal. Okay, <laughs> once you get out of school, you it pretty much evens out. You either have street smarts or book smarts or a little bit of both, mm -hmm. and, and either way, you, you got to live by your wits to get you get you going. But man, for somebody who's in the music business. It, this can eat you alive if you if you meet up with the wrong people. They go, uh, hey, I like your style. Here, sign here on the dotted line. I'm going to give you $5,000 as a signing bonus. And then uh, if you don't know that you have to pay that $5,000 back and then some, uh, you know, and you got to pay for, uh, you know, all the money you make from your from your uh, record sales, uh, a big piece is going back to that record company. So tell me about you okay. navigating you know, okay, we're out of Michigan. You made it to, to Nashville. What took you to Nashville? What well, took me to Nashville, um, my love of music. In Michigan, music's not really huge. Yes, it's big for hot, large artists to actually perform there. Or someone that is um, trying to make it in the industry, Michigan's not really a state for that. That's why a lot of people from all over the country 
travel to Nashville, Tennessee to try and get somewhere with it. Um, I got lucky going to Nashville at all. I haven't, I barely go to Nashville actually. Um, I ended up meeting up with this uh, studio called Kevin Fever Productions. And um, they're where I've been recording this whole time. They've been giving me the chances. I've been getting connections through music, through playing my music. Um, and yeah, I've been finding promoters, they've been finding me. So life has been lining up so much stuff for me because when COVID hit, I would just sit home writing songs the whole time. And I was working and collecting money. So I saved me up a lot since I couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, a um, lot of creators did the same thing. As soon as the lockdown happened, they, they just started writing. That that was the only thing they could do. If they're stuck in their rooms, yep. if a creator is stuck in his room, he, that's all he's going to do is create, whether you be a painter or a movie maker or a, a musician. Yeah. And I'm glad you didn't say too many bad things about Michigan because I didn't want Kid Rock or, or any of the others uh, coming after us real quick. You know, uh, you know that, that guy sings a lot about Michigan. So is he is he the biggest thing to come out of Michigan when you're growing up and, and you do listen to some of this music from the 40s through the 90s? Who's buying you those records? Tell me about your mom and dad, man. Um, My my dad was never around, honestly. Uh, I won't get into that part because, yeah, it's just, yeah, that. My mother... Uh, she was around when she could be. My grandparents raised me because of situations. Uh, she tried to be there as much as she could. Um, and because of that, I have a song on the album, my first album is coming out, that her passing is what uh, had me write it because uh, she passed unexpectedly due to a heart, heart failure. Mm, sorry. So... Um, I won't say the name of the song yet because it has yet to come out because of the album. But um, it, I wrote it literally the day she passed. It, that's it. All just came to my head. <laughs> yeah, that's a, an amazing thing. That inspiration. I mean, I'm sorry that your grandmother had to, uh, you know, had to go. I know that. Man, it, it's not the the people that die that have the the problems. It's the ones that they leave behind that we're so sad that they're not here anymore. Man, you know, why do people have to die? And I know there's the scientists that are working on that. Oh, what's that? Say it again. Uh, that song that I'm not naming yet is actually about my mother. Oh, she's the one that passed away unexpectedly. Wow. Yes. Um, my grandma did pass also. That's the song Joan I have out right now as a single. That song is about her. That's my grandmother. Man, you've uh, been hit by tragedy, brother. I mean, that's two ladies in your life that uh, were very important to you, and and mm -hmm. they're both gone. And you're a young young man. What what year did you graduate high school? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven, man. You're, as far as I'm concerned, you're a whippersnapper, a youngin, <laughs> and uh, here you are making this really good music. But you're inspired by by tragedy, by the things around you. Uh, Joan, big ups to Joan and your mom's name. What was her, what was her name? My mom's name was Dina. Big ups to Dina, man. I mean, as long as you keep singing about them, keep talking about them, keep thinking about them, they will always be around. That's what I, I think about all the people that have passed in my life, man. As long as we keep talking about them, keep them in your heart, man. They live forever and ever. And that's, uh, you know, the uh, this um, th that's all you want when you when you leave this earth is that you made an impression. And this is what you're mm -hmm. doing with your music, man. You are, are putting it out there on this platform, on YouTube and other platforms, and and it's going to live on as long as the electricity stays on and, and the Internet stays up. You know, uh, this society doesn't go crashing and burning like it might happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell me about, you know, that. yeah, how how the world around you is treating you. you you're living in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, population, whatever. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh you, you know you're you're making a life there is is music it or do you have uh you know uh, other avenues of uh of income uh, how are you making your way there in murfreesboro right now it's only my music i i'm just starting out so like every like every starting out artist we have day jobs <laughs> and bills 
are a pain in the butt. So I'm struggling with that at the moment, but I do plan on getting merchandise going so that more revenue can come in. So it's easier to get the songs recorded, get albums out. And also so people can have some stuff from me that they want it. Yeah. I mean, that is a one big way that you could support an artist because uh, streaming on Spotify you get pennies, maybe half a penny, make maybe pieces of pennies, you know, that per stream, you know, list, uh, buying a song on Apple. That's a little bit better. Uh, if you get a website put up, uh, buying the song directly from you, it could be a, a great opportunity, but, uh, you know, I, I guess people are making their money, uh, um, playing on stage. Uh, do, do you get to go out and, and play on the road? Do you, do you play a, a solo or, or with a band at all? Um, I don't have a full band. I have a bass player, though. Uh, he, he has played some gigs with me. Um, I It's in the music industry. Usually, if you don't have a full band, you hire utility players, what they're called. So they'll just hop on stage with you. They'll know your material, and they'll just play the gig. Yeah, they call them utility players. I call them hired guns. Because <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of studio musicians. I mean, it, it, people. anybody that knows the history of music knows that back in the 50s and in the 60s even, there were, there were only maybe a handful of studios that were really making a name for themselves. And each one of those studios had musicians that were in-house, hired guns, Stax Records, uh, you know, Sun Records, uh, the uh, Motown. They all had their own uh, musicians yep. that would play on every record. And a lot of times the bands would all show up to the studio and they'd say, uh, the uh, engineer would go, uh, we only need the singer. All, you, all the rest of you guys, you guys can go. Be gone. We have, we have the music all set up. All we need is the guy with his voice, and then he can leave too. I mean, what do you think about that, the way music was made way back when? Uh, it was a lot tougher back then, actually, because, for one, uh, my producer, Spike Jones, um, he has told me stories. He, he's been in the business for 60 years. He was a guitar prodigy at first. Then in his teen years, he decided to go behind the glass recording artists. And, um, like all, this is all artists I know do this. When they record a song, they have a notebook or a piece of paper. They will read off of while they're singing their vocals for track. Back then he told me, you didn't get that choice. You had to memorize it or you were kicked out of the booth. Wait a minute. When you said Spike Jones, I'm thinking of Spike Jones, Spike Jones, but no, that guy died back in 1965. Uh, what, what Spike Jones are you talking about? Is there a Spike Jones Jr.? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, he's a, just a producer. And he was a guitarist, but um, he's the only Spike Jones I know about, actually. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, there's some some really famous Spike Jones and, and even Spike Jones Jr. Uh, if, if I look those up. But my goodness, man, you said that name and I went, what? But uh, hey, if you yeah. got a name, if you got a name like Spike Jones, you need to live up to to uh, something something historical. So I'm sure he's pretty good, man. And I've heard the music that you put out, and it's a uh, it's clean, man. It's definitely clean. It's it's got a good bounce. It's got a good feel to it. Uh, there's the Outlaw was was a, is a great song. The out. Out of my life is the one I'm talking about that bounces like uh, uh, like nope. uh, like you're on a horse. Bang, butter, bang, butter, yeah. bang, butter, bang. So I, good. I actually did it that way for a certain reason because um, when I – it was because of, I think, I can't remember which ex it was. Uh, yeah, I know I'm calling them out, but I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> you that, and Taylor Swift. Uh, I, wrote it, I wrote it because I had like a certain amount of exes that made me choose between them and the, them and music. And I would never give music up because my grandma made me promise that I would never quit on my dream, on the journey. I never will. And anybody who stops me, tries to stop me can move out of the way. And that song portrays I'm never going to give up on my dream. I'm never going to give up on my goals. And I'm going to make everything reality. And it just, in reality... It just, you can tell your exes, this is, I'm glad you're out of my life. 
yeah, you and Taylor Swift are on the same path, man. And look how far she went talking about her exes. And even before that, Alanis Morissette was talking about all her exes. And even before that, Joan Baez was talking about her exes. Even before that, Mahalia Park, you know, you know, all these, all these women, you know, don't, don't mess with some women because they will write a song about you. They'll write a book about you. They'll make a movie about you. They'll do paintings uh, where they, they draw you in, in unflattering positions and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't mess with a, a, a woman scorned, right? Oh, but uh, you know you sometimes, sometimes room for the males to do that though. <laughs> and I'm just flipping it on its side because you could do the same thing. All my exes live in Texas, you know. Oh yeah, that's why you make your way to Tennessee. I guess all your exes live in Michigan. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's your take on that song right there <laughs> yeah oh that's fantastic man but uh you know like you said you're cowboy riding horses bailing hay making music who's teaching you how to sing i actually um when i first started singing i i wasn't that good because i was not hearing myself with um just when I was singing, I wasn't hearing the accents correctly when I was singing. So my friend Dave DeMay, actually, I met him. He lives here in Tennessee, very close to Nashville. And I sent him a video of me singing, and he gave me singing instructions. And I followed those to a T. And he, every video I sent him, I got better and better. And... With every song now I sing and practice, I know I get better each time. Fantastic, man. Just keep perfecting your craft. Uh, you know, who's making the – now, who's writing the mu- – who's arranging the music and who's writing the songs? That's two questions, I guess. I'm a, I actually write all my own lyrics. I, um, I also – the rhythm section of every song I create. So – it's the all the other instruments. The bass is my bass player, and then we have utility players or my producer playing the other instruments. So, what instruments do you play? I play acoustic and electric guitar. I really haven't dabbled much into anything else. I'll, I have played a bit of piano. That was because my first guitar teacher he had a grand piano. He taught me how to play a little bit, which was fun. Yeah, uh, from what I understand, if you could play piano. It's like the key to a lot of other instruments. But if you could play guitar, that's what's going to get you the girls. Ah. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, what what kind of gear? Very fun what what kind of gear are you using? I mean, did, what was that that first guitar, and who gave that to you? My very first guitar ever was a Yamaha, um, pure acoustic, and I uh, saved up just enough. Yeah, I worked a couple summers, and uh, saved. Uh, it was like about $150. So I, my grandpa and my grandma took me to the guitar center, and I tested out guitars and found that one. And I I still have it. I'll never get rid of it because it's my very first guitar. <laughs> this portion of the podcast brought to you by Guitar Center. Please give us money. Please give Richie Mullen <laughs> some money because he's been using guitars <laughs> from your store since he was a wee lad. But, uh, you know, that's <laughs> something. You know, you were you worked hard for it. This is an ethic that you are teaching the kids right now. You, my loyal listener, mm-hmm. are learning uh, gems. You're, t- you're getting gemmed from Richie Mullins. you got to work hard to get what you want. What kind of work were you doing those two summers? Um, farm work. I um, also worked a couple jobs that, of course, I was too young to be paid by the government. So I worked on the table for some people, mowing lawns. Uh, farm work was one of my biggest money makers. Uh, after I was 10 because then they started actually wanting to pay me for my effort because I could do more than what I could when I was younger. Dad, you know, you start building up those muscles and, uh, you know, farm, <laughs> a farm hand, that's a, that's a job that I feel like it's probably dying. You know, people still need food. People still need uh, to have stuff grown and, you know, and, and farmed and, you know, ranch mm-hmm. hands that, that, you know, some of the, uh, the stories that you hear, and and I guess the, the TV shows that I watch were dad's a farmer, but the kids don't want to be farmers. And dad was a rancher, and the kids don't want to be ranchers. They want to go off 
and do something else, make TikTok videos, and that's all they want to do with their lives. Uh, but dad yeah. needs help. You know, that, that farm's going to die if he doesn't have his kids come and take over. He's going to have to hire ranch hands, which are very expensive. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, you, you grew up, you, did you grow up on a farm or did you grow up, you say you were, you weren't, you didn't have a lot of money. You were, as you say, you were poor, but, um, you know, but, but did you grow up on a farm or near a farm? I grew up near farms. I lived in a a suburb, um, and it wasn't too big of a house, but it was good enough for the family. But there was farmland all around. I lived like, I think it was like, this school was about five minutes away from me, so it was easy to get there. But everywhere in that town, farmland. It's nice, man. It really, it, it's nice to grow up in, in that kind of a situation. You know, I, I'm a city mouse, but my wife, she's a country mouse. And guess where we live? In the country. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because when she's happy, everybody's happy. So, uh, yeah, happy wife, happy life. That's a thing. <laughs> so here I am. I'm living out in the country. You know, the only th- thing that I had to worry about was the Internet. Make sure I had some good Internet service. And thankfully, I found some of that. And, uh, and I get to talk to people just like you, Richie Mullins, find out where you came from. You say you're just starting out, but my goodness, you've been working on your craft for years now. Uh, you know, if you say you graduated in 2011, that's at least, uh, 10, 11, 12 years. You've been working on this, uh, that's making it in the music business. What have you done since 2011? Well, I actually started playing guitar when I was 14 years old. Yeah. So when I was a freshman in high school. And, um, after high school, I decided I was working jobs and just was hanging out with my guitar teacher all the time. He was an old blues and jazz, uh, player. And he loved rock also. Like he was a, he was an old hippie. <laughs> and, um, he, he unfortunately did pass away before I moved away from Michigan and, uh, one of my songs on the first album are about him. Like this album is actually centered around my travel, my struggles. It, it, it says a lot about my life. Yeah. That's what a lot of times the first album of an artist, if they do get that far, it's about what they've done up till then your whole life. You know, I'd say, what are you in your twenties about now? I'm 30. 30, 30 years old, that, that's 30 years of experience, life experience that you've put in, blood, sweat, tears, and, and you get to put this into this album. And that's, a, that, that, that's like a, a writer writing a book, a movie maker making a film. You're telling stories about your life, right. the good times and the bad times in, those, uh, in that uh, songwriting. Man, this is, this is an amazing power that you have. And how many songs are on that on that album that's coming out? I'm kind of excited. Um, there's 12 songs to start with. Um, there will be a deluxe album that will have 14 songs. What? There's a there's already yep. a, a special VIP extended issue uh, that could be personally signed by Richie Mullins, right? You can get personally signed ones. No, I, I I wonder about that. You know, do people make albums anymore? I didn't think people did, still made albums. I thought it, it was singles. Like you, you released Joan. You know about your grandma, and that's nice. That you know people probably go buy that. Uh, where can they buy that? Uh, they can buy that any streaming service uh, like Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, of course, YouTube. You can't really buy it, but <laughs> you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, my website, RichieMullinsMusic.com, has the songs linked to it so you can listen to it anytime. Um, my Out of, Out of My Life song will be on there very soon. Uh, I've just been out for a little bit of time, so I haven't gotten to it quite yet. Um, but yeah, any, any streaming service in the world for music, you can listen to my music on. That is out right now. I'm glad you said RichieMullinsMusic.com because when I was trying to find you know, your, your spots online. I found your Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, distro kid. Those were pretty easy to find once I, I found your YouTube. But when I put in Richie Mullins into my Googles, what am I going to get? 
Richard Wayne's Mullins. Uh, he was an American <laughs> contemporary Christian mu music singer and songwriter, best known for his worship songs, Osh Awesome God, and Someti Sometimes by Step. But he was, he was born back in 55, and he died in 1997. Now, Richie mm -hmm. Mullins, man, how are we going to be able to brand you? Because that's the, the, the name of the game these days, is you got to brand Richie Mullins music, I guess, Richie Mullins music whenever they look at your social medias and stuff? I'm an original artist. Uh, I've had people ask me to do covers. I, I used to do it before I first started music, but I just, I can't sing them anymore because it doesn't feel like myself. I know some people can, but when I play my originals, I, I know I feel everything and I can give the emotion that I need to when I'm performing or just playing song with somebody. A uh, cover that can't really quite do that, but my own songs, I give them the pure emotion that they need. I see that, man. It's it's nice when you have the opportunity to sing your own songs. A lot of times when people hire out a band, there's two ways you can make it in the music business. You could be a party band where you do covers, you know, on, on the weekends, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yep. and, and you make some money that way. Or you could be an original artist and try to sell it that way. Some people, man, some people just, just can't sing other people's songs. They just have that, they have too much feeling in their hearts for their own music. They got too much stories to tell to sing other people's songs. So maybe, exactly. you know, even like the, even the biggest artists that I've seen on stage, every once in a while, they'll throw in a little piece of a cover. Like I, I, I think I saw, the one that stands out in my head is uh, Greg Kinn. He did a, a song called mm -hmm. Our Love's yeah. in Jeopardy, baby, Greg Kinn. Well, I saw him mm -hmm. in Coconut Grove in Miami, and there's a song mm -hmm. called Coconut Grove, not by him, but he sang a little piece of it just to give homage, to give thanks to, to the people of Coconut Grove for having him out. But, uh, you know, ah, I, do, have you been? You've been a cover artist then before. You, when you were a kid, uh, when you were first starting out, did you do any, like, birthday parties and whatever? Um, no, actually, I didn't. I was just uh, playing in front of family, friends, um, anyone I could jam with. I um, In Michigan, me and a group of friends had what were called uh, jam circles at local businesses. I, I guess you could play. I played in front of uh, a little bit of concerts in front of people then. Um, cause we, it'd be like, a uh, about 15, 20 of us in a huge circle in a restaurant or some business that people would eat food, diner. Um, and we'd all take turns playing a song. See, that's beautiful. And this is, this is your family or your friends that are playing with you. That was all friends, all friends. You know, it's nice to have those friends and do you still keep in touch with any of those? Yes, I do. Um, when I do visit Michigan again, I plan on go being part of a jam circle again because I honestly miss doing that. Those were very fun. Oh yeah, I, we have a um, a place uh, called TC's here in Conway, Arkansas. It used to be known as the Grand Old Opry West. And one of my favorite things <laughs> when I get to go there on Sunday night, we have a good music community here in the, in Arkansas, in Central Arkansas, where. The, the all these different bands band members will get together on Sunday night at TC's the old Grand Opry West and go have a blues jam or go have a jam session you'll see the guitarist from that band the singer from that band the drummer from this band and the uh the the bassist from a, an entirely different band and they'll all jam together and exchange ideas and 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 tune their guitars hey i never thought of putting my capo that way and you know, listening to it detune that way, but um, do you ever? Do you ever? Do they? Do you have any people from Michigan that are thinking about coming to Nashville? Or are you the only one, man? The the only person that traveled down in your circle? Um, I'm actually the only one who traveled down in my circle. Um, the other ones that they're up there in age, they don't really plan on making it far in music. The um, one that actually did actually travel. Mike Fleckenstein, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, he he actually toured around quite a bit. He's an amazing finger-picking style player, amazing singer, and uh, he even helped me a little bit while he could. 
Man, that's ah, more tragedy. I expect a song from uh, about that guy. Uh, Michael Funk is dying. Man, that's a... Uh, Ah, why do people have to die? I, I know that there's scientists out there that are much smarter than I am that it went to, all right, went to way more school and got A's and maybe A pluses, and they're working on uh, on making people live longer. What do you think about all this? Let's get off of music for a second. Talk about some of this chemistry, uh, you know, the gene <laughs> splicing and, and uh, you know, things that you're going to deal with. You know, after I'm long gone, you're going to still be around, and people are going to be living 150 200 years old it's not unheard of people getting their heads uh frozen and put on robot bodies what do you think is that going to happen are we all getting chipped what, what's what, what do you think the the future holds for ai and all that kind of stuff honestly anything can happen especially the way how how fast the world is advancing um ai I, like i said i grew up in the 90s i didn't i personally actually didn't grow up with technology um I didn't even have computers when I was growing up. My first cell phone I got when I was 18. <laughs> so to me, take not, like the cell phone I use right now, I, I only halfway know how to use it. I'm not good with technology. <laughs> so seeing all this new stuff, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> But that's the thing. You got to be good with technology. You got to know how to how to use your Instagrams and do a TikTok dancing video while you're playing your guitar, telling people where Richie Mullins is going to be next week at the uh, what stage you're going to be playing at. You're dancing around, doing a TikTok video, doing the robot. You know, could you? But uh, do you, or, or do you have a team that helps you out with that stuff? Yeah, I do have people that help me out. I don't quite have a full solid team, but I have friends. I have people I know that also promoters will help. I am, I know people that are slowly teaching me certain stuff with like TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook. I, I'm slowly learning, like saying old dogs learn new tricks. <laughs> wow, but Richie, Rich, hey, and, yeah, speaking of old dogs, <laughs> hey, he makes an appearance. No, hey, right on time. He's 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 good. He's a good dog. He's right on cue. But uh, you, you know, you're you're a person that has to navigate all this stuff, and and uh, maybe TikTok's not not the way to go. Uh, are the Chinese watching us? And do we care? I don't know. <laughs> it just, uh, are, you know, you've you've pretty much given all your privacy away. Even right now, we're we're talking on this video. I'm going to put this up on YouTube and all these different streams. It's out there, you know, it's part of oh, your yeah. life story is out there, whether you like it or not, you know, and that's, that's what you have to do if you want to make it in this world. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, club owners that won't hire you unless you got 10,000 followers on your Instagram, you know, or, or yep. you know, at least 5,000 people following you on Twitter. You know, I, it, it used to be, I'd send them a tape. You send them a tape of you playing and take a listen to this tape. Do you like how it sounds? Okay, hire me next Friday night. But now, yep. what? Now, how, how do you get hired? Uh, it's always a tricky thing. It's they uh, like your music. And like you said, some places want you to have a bunch of followers and a uh, huge social media presence. Um, what I've noticed, like, with uh, Broadway in Nashville, it's not – quite that way it's they want all cover artists there so i know i ain't playing broadway ah. but i've actually played in atlanta georgia before i played two shows there and they just they love my sound that's the reason why i was able to play i don't have a huge following yet i i know that'll happen it's just it, it'll, it'll get there <laughs> yeah you got me and i hate that you have to worry about that kind of stuff it used to be that all you had to do was worry about playing your music Put it on a recording and let the record company distribute it, and uh, and let the well let the the guys like me the the uh, the the radio guys and the club guys that'll go play your Richie Mullins music out at the club or out on the radio. I mean, have you ha gotten any love from from some of the club owners and some of the radio uh, the club DJs and some of the radio DJs have have they shown you any love on the air at all? Yes, actually, they have. Um, cool. My one of my promoters, uh, Caden. He uh, he's really good at what he does, and he's got me on many stations that uh, like college radio stations, national stations, even some of Massachusetts. It's all around. 
And uh, my, I have other, two more promoters that have been doing the same for me. So I've been getting airplay, all that, and it, it's really awesome. Well, give them some shout outs. I think we're, we're probably heading for the wind down. Give some shout outs to people that have helped you along the way. Um, Caden Gordon, he, he, he's a great. Um, okay, they're both you, great you, too. You, you cut out for a second when you said Caden Gordon. Oh, um, okay. Um, my other two promoters, um, uh, Paige and then Cindy. Cindy is in another country at the moment. Um, but, uh, Paige, she's in Georgia actually. Yeah, so well, they're, they're both great promoters. They've been helping me cause I am actually currently in, uh, the polls for the ESA awards. What? Now, now you buried yep. the lead, man. Uh, not only are you making music, but you're also uh, getting accolades. You get nominated for stuff. Well, tell me about the ESA Awards. That's the uh, that's what is the ESA Awards? I know I've uh, we've talked about it on this podcast, but I want you to you tell me what the ESA Awards are. Uh, it's International Singer Songwriter Association. Um, it's anyone can join. It's free, uh, or even people can just join to support. Really. Uh, it's for any artists out there, no matter what your genre is. And um, they help you promote, they get you promoted, they put you on radio stations. And uh, when you submit a song, you have to actually go through quite a few people just to get in the nominations. And right now, we're in the polls for the finalists. And I'm hoping I get in the finalists, but if I don't, I'm still happy that I made it in the nomination. You got to be happy. My goodness, I'd be happy as well if somebody uh, thought that one of my songs was any good. Not that I've ever written a song. I, I have I, I have not that talent or I have that not that drive or desire or maybe desire, but not the drive. I haven't taken the time to try to write a song from my heart. Maybe I don't have a heart. Maybe I'm like the Tin Man. <laughs> maybe I need to go see the wizard and find my heart. But, you know, or, or a brain, either one, one of those things, but uh, it's tough, man. It, it, it's tough to do what you do, have a feeling and then put it to words. Are you writing on paper or, or using an app to write your music? I don't use apps. I just use pencil and paper. It gets straight out of my head. Um, my first write down is usually a rough draft. I look, I look over it and then usually my head, my brain will, okay, this is better wording, do this. Or like, it'd be, sometimes I've had some songs I wrote in 10 minutes and I didn't need to change a thing because it was that good. Well, while you're writing your songs, are you thinking of the melody? Uh, I'm riding with my gun in my cowboy <laughs> hat. Are you writing, uh, are, are you writing with the melody in your head? Yeah, actually, uh, um, I've always been able to hear music, like this melody in my head, the way the guitar sounds. So when I'm writing, I'm just hearing the chords in my head, and then I can just uh, pick out how it's supposed to be, the mood of it, the feel of it. Um, that's how I write the lyrics. But then after that, it, it can always change for when I put the guitar in my arms. Oh, that's another thing. You, you still have that... that yamaha guitar that you bought for 150 bucks uh but uh what kind of gear are you uh sporting now what's the what's the the acts of choice when you go to the studio uh i love my martin i have i, I love that brand so much um i've been recently starting to use my gretch hollow body acoustic with my uh big uh um, marshall amp <laughs> it's a uh stack amp Man, I like a Gretsch. I, I think, what was it, Brian Setzer from the, uh, uh, oh, my gosh, uh, Brian Setzer from the, um, uh, he, he had the, the, a big, uh, a, he, he, well, he, he played Joe, uh, Joe Cochran or Johnny Cochran in, in a movie. But, uh, oh, my gosh, I can't, I can't remember what Brian Setzer's band was. Hmm. Let's look that up real quick. That's why they call it the Great Gretsch Sound. That, yeah, he plays. He plays one of those a uh, big white Gretsch, and uh, oh, the Stray Cats, duh, and also the the Brian Setzer uh, orchestra uh, that he he did a lot of uh, that that jump, jive, and whale type uh, singing, uh, swing music. Yep. 
But do you, you, oh, add, yeah. yeah, you add a lot of, uh, well, I mean, swing music was huge in, in the nineties in the early nineties, they were, they, it, it made a mm-hmm. big comeback at, at that time. But, uh, you know, I, I never did get who turned you on to the old style music. Was that your grandparents playing, playing some old stuff in the, in, in the house? Yeah, playing? actually it was. My grandparents, they loved uh, listening to real music like Conway Twitty, George Jones, uh, Billy Nelson. They, they they loved all that country music. And also I listened to old rock, jazz, blues. I, I was well-versed in almost every genre. I, I do respect rap and hip-hop to a point. I respect their skill and everything in it. It's just not my genre, honestly. But I, I love country the most. Well, it's nice to have all those influences in your pocket, even even a little bit of hip hop, because those are our lyricists. You know, those are the guys yeah. that that have that flow. They tell stories as well. I mean, the the greatest hip hop artist that that I that I I think of, in my opinion, are the ones that can tell a story, and they're not just talking mm-hmm. about uh, degrading women. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, women are like, beautiful, no doubt about it. But you don't have to talk about them like that, man. That's not nope, nice. you do not have to at all. <laughs> my, my favorite hip hop artist, Michael Jackson. <laughs> ah, mine's Heavy D. Heavy D and the boys. Uh, in fact, when I was a firefighter down in the Florida Keys, I had Heavy D on the back of my helmet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, ah, good getting to know you, Richie Mullins. You're a good dude. I can tell, and and you seem like a good. You're a good boy. You're a good catch. You're gonna make somebody a a fine hubby one day. Uh, are are you currently attached at all, or or can we uh can we get some girls to swipe right? I have a girlfriend right now. Yep. And don't plan for that to end anytime soon. There you go. Um. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. It's nice to have some love. That's a you know somebody to to help you, uh, support you, somebody to come home to, uh, to say, hey, I had a good day, or hey, I had a bad day, and they actually want to hear about that day. They, you know, it's nice to have that love. That's pursuit of happiness. That's part of uh, that's, that's your that's your God given gift, the pursuit of yes. happiness, not happiness but the pursuit of happiness, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you got a smile on your face and that's a beautiful thing. So, uh, people, mm-hmm. if they, uh, slide into your DMS business only, uh, or what are you open to do? Are you open for collaborations? Uh, what kind of jobs do you want uh, as you head off into the future? Uh, do you want to do shows at clubs? Do you have any shows coming up that you can tell people about? Right now? I currently don't have any shows coming up because a um, little bit of finances, um, but collaborations, I would love to do that. I have some people actually pretty soon be getting a hold of to see if they are able to do collaborations. Um, I love, I love to co-write with people, uh, do gigs. I just, anything with music, I absolutely love to do. Well, that's a nice thing about being part of that ISSA. It seems like it's, you know, a good community, especially for independent artists that, that haven't been signed to the quote unquote huge record labels which can yeah. be great and but they can be bad as well you know so i've heard i've heard stories on both sides and i think it can't be the fault of the huge record companies my goodness they had to change their whole business model you know people don't buy albums anymore they don't buy cds they don't buy tapes eight tracks forget about it they don't buy any of that stuff yeah. you know it's all online so they had to they had to change their their scope you know, so these record executives, yeah. you're talking about, you know, people that are waiting until you've made a following on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, your TikTok, whatever. You have a, a giant following, and then the record company wants to come by and say, hey, I see you have a big following. You've already done all the work exactly. for us. Uh, can we take half of your money? Yeah, I I currently don't plan on signing with a label at all because I know – the sacrifice you have to make to join one. And to me, myself, it's not worth it because they want to change you. Um, And uh, I just rather stay independent. Well, you know, I I could see that. I I could see that side, but devil's advocate, uh, you know, there, there has to be something good about being with a record label at a certain point. Once you get to this level where you can't go any further on your own, 
You got to have somebody backing you up. And I'm glad you have, you, you're right. starting to develop a team, people that help to like and share all of your music that's online. Uh, they listen uh, to it. They, they tell people about you. Hey, now you've got me. I'll be telling people about you uh, through this podcast. And also, you know, when you have music that comes out, I want to play it on radio. What.com that's sitting right there behind me. And, uh, you know, maybe play a, a video at a club. I know you have some kind of a video for that Joan. And I think that, that, I yes, know that I there's, there's a, there's at least a piece of it on the, uh, on, on the YouTube, uh, a 46 second snippet of the Joan. Uh, um, there's a, there's a full, uh, music video for Joan on YouTube. <clears throat> it, you can just type in I see it. Joan by or Richie, yeah, Joan by Richie Mullen. Um, the my song "Never Alone" has a lyric video to it, a movie background lyric video. Um, and right now, "Outlaw," "State of Country," those are just uh, still pictures because I just need to get the time to be able to <laughs> make lyric videos for that. And same with uh, "I'm on Life." Well, Richie Mullins, I'm seeing in the video, it looks like you have a two-man team now. It's you and your bass player are walking along with you. So it looks like you have, you're starting to, to develop the Richie Mell Mullins group. That's going to be uh, a group of boys and girls maybe that are hanging out by your side, helping to push you along and then turn. You know, if Richie Mullins gets great, everybody around you is going to get great as well. Because I, I think exactly. that's, that's you're, you're that type of guy. That's going to help. You're going to help a lot of people. You know, once you take care of yourself, you can start helping the people in your community and further along and further beyond, man. So uh, you keep going. You keep doing what you do, man. And uh, you've given a few shout outs. Any other shout outs you want to give as we wind this thing down? Um, To my music producer, Spike Jones, all the amazing work he does. And to the uh, owner of the studio, Michelle Storm. Um, for just having Kevin Fever Productions around to make all the music possible, to make even connections possible. And um, ch I also shout out my girlfriend, Allison, too, because she actually helped me make the Joan music video. How sweet. It's good to have have her backing you up, man. Now, uh, yeah. I do want you to send me a link to Spike Jones and send me a link to the uh, to the uh, the studio that you use because I want to put that in the show notes. Okay. I want people to know because as soon as they hear Spike Jones, they're gonna think what I think, man. There was a Spike Jones, a very <laughs> famous Spike Jones, and I, I want to know the Spike Jones that's helping Richie Mullins uh, achieve your goals, achieve your dreams, and in turn. Everybody gets their dreams, you know, push that much further. That's beautiful, man. That's, a, that's working together. That's a music community. And that's a, you're, you're building a community. You're part of a community. And, and it just gets better and better the more people that join in. All right. I don't want this to be the last time that we talk. As time progresses, as that album comes out, if you want to come back and give a shout out and, talk, and tell people about the album, uh, you know, and how it's doing thus far, you definitely come on back here to the What Makes You Famous podcast and tell more of the Richie Mullen story because we've only scratched the surface. We've only given little little tiny tidbits of who R Richie Mullins is. You're a smiley guy. You're a happy guy. And uh, I'm sure Allison's uh, part of that as well, uh, keeping yes. you happy, and you keep her happy as well. But um, hey, are there any other avenues you want to explore? Anything else you want to tell people? Um, I would, for one, I'd love to definitely come back. That's for sure. Um, all I can say to people is uh, check out all my music on all my platforms, especially ones that are coming out uh, in the future. Um, check out my website, richiemullinsmusic.com. Check out my YouTube channel that has all my songs, same as Spotify, any streaming service. Um, have a great time listening to songs. I'd love to know if you like it on um, YouTube, leave a comment, like or and that. You can always do that with those and like all other streaming services. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. You can interact with the people uh, on this thing we call the interwebs. But um, all right, I always finish these things off with last words for the people. This could be words to live by, maybe something you heard a long time ago, maybe a mantra that you wake up with every morning, or whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Richie Mullins, give the last words for the people. 
Well, my best advice I could ever give to someone, follow your dreams. Don't give up. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't make it in your dream. Life will guide you to what you need to do. So never give up on your dream. Well, there you have it, party people. Richie Mullins. What a cool dude. That kid's going to go far. And I say kid because I'm old. I'm, I'm a much older than him. He's a whippersnapper. He's just starting out. But he's been working on it for at least 10 years, probably longer. Man, he's been, been carry the one times pie at least 15, 16 years. He's been working on his craft, playing that guitar for the people, for his family and friends at first, and now for the world. The world. Yeah, that good country music, that good bouncy country music. You're out in the range and, you know, working that cattle, you know, riding those horses, uh, pl- plowing those fields. You can listen to that good Richie Mullins music in your ears. Yeah, and bailing that hay. Don't forget, bailing that hay because that's good, good work. And it's going to make your body strong. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. You know, when I was in the fire department, uh, one of my favorite things was uh, to work out was the axe that we would uh, swing that axe, chop wood, you know, and oh, and and breaking up old cars uh, to do, you know, I guess we were doing training for uh, rescue and and uh, getting people out of their cars once they got all mangled up Uh, the cars that is hopefully not the people. But uh, yeah, we'd break into cars, not just using the jaws of life, you know, we do it old school. Uh, take the uh, take the axe and get them out of there, and take the pry bars and get them out of there. Work those muscles, yeah, be strong. But uh, yeah, he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. You know what he is? He's a cowboy, and he's singing cowboy songs just for you. And he's been inspired. You know, I'm sorry that his mom and his grandma and his friends have passed. You know, there's. We deal with tragedy all the time, but the thing that Richie Mullins can do is take that tragedy and make people live forever, make them immortal in a song. I, I that's a that's a thing. Immortalize somebody in a song, and that's beautiful. Richie Mullins, you keep doing what you do. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. All right, that's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Now, if you, yes, you, my loyal listener. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for me. It's keysdanradiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.